What's up guys, Erroneous here with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the brand new champion coming to the game soon, the new Fusion, and that is going to be Oella, I believe. So yeah, so Oella is a new Sylvan Watcher champion, legendary champion. Some say that she's not that great, and she's definitely a skippable character or a champion to fuse, and others might say differently. So I'm going to give you my input on what I believe you should be doing, and if this Fusion's even worth going for, let's get into it. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up the uh, character here online. So I'm just going to do that really quickly for you. So here we have Oella, the fusion, the Sylvan Watcher fusion. She looks fantastic. I mean, look at how she looks right now. I mean, let me move myself out of the way here, but she looks phenomenal. Right behind me, she just looks incredible. I, I love the way the aesthetics are on this champion. The blades are pretty sick. I love the blue daggers that she has. The dual wielded blue daggers look fantastic. I mean, the characters just never end up missing when it comes to the looks, right? They never do a bad job when it comes to building these characters in regards to their aesthetics. So I really love that. Now to go over her skills. And before I even go over their skills, I've already watched videos from other YouTubers, content creators, what their thoughts are on this champion, but I wanna give you a little bit of snippet of what she can do in the game and it really just depends on where you are on your account so first we're gonna go on her a1 here flutter fluster interesting ability since she has uh the wings there and she looks like a butterfly and butterflies flutter right so attacks one enemy 80 percent chance of placing a decreased speed debuff for two turns and this debuff cannot be resisted if Oltan of the shell is on the same team we don't know what Oltan of the Shell can do. We haven't even seen him in game. We've only seen a brief video clip of him with her. So we only got the visuals of this guy. Uh, so we don't know anything that this guy can do. Is he even going to be a good character pair pairing with Oella? We don't know. He could end up being absolute trash and then she might not be worth it. The issue is Clarium likes to do this thing where they don't want you to see everything until they're in game so sometimes you want to decide right when they come out or sometimes you decide to go for them you know after the first day or two i mean obviously you're going to be grinding for regular tournaments and events to begin with so after a couple days into the fusion you might decide then but i feel like they're going to bring out oltan of the shell sometime next week maybe on wednesday or tuesday they'll go over oltan or maybe they won't start going over oltan and we won't know about them until thursday when the fusion comes out we're not sure i'm hoping that he does really well and pairs well because if so she could be absolute game changer for a lot of people's accounts because if there's a unresistible decrease speed then you don't have to build her with any accuracy whatsoever which means in iron twins she's going to be insane and she'll be really good as well not incredible but really good in hydra as well so that's just the a1 right it does book out to 100% chance. I think she's the only champion in the game. Unless I'm thinking, unless Tomb Lord does it. Let me just take a peek here. He does. So Tomb Lord does have a 100% chance of placing decreased speed on the target for two turns, but it has to be a critical hit. So for Tomb Lord, you have to have a prerequisite for it. So he will end up placing the decreased speed. However, he does need to hit a critical. Um, now for Oella, she would have to have Oltan of the Shell, uh, and it wouldn't be resisted either. So Tomb Lords can be resisted depending on the affinity of Iron Twins, but mainly this champion, in my opinion so far, is built for Iron Twins. Of course, she'll be really good in Faction Wars, but, uh, you know, there's other champions you can utilize other than her in Faction Wars. So Hand of the Spring A2 heals all allies by 30% of their max HP, increases the duration of all ally buffs, by one turn so my issue here is it's their max HP rather than her max HP so automatically the heals are not gonna be all that great as compared to if it was based on her max HP the heals would be massive because then you could stack her with a lot of HP and then she'll be healing your allies by a bunch now the increasing the duration of all ally buffs is not bad now the thing about iron twins 
I do not believe that increasing the buffs will trigger his passive where he gains turn meter. I could be wrong and someone could leave it in the comments down below, but I do not believe that increasing the duration of buffs will trigger the Iron Twins turn meter boost. If it does, please leave a comment down below on that. I'd love to know about that, but I don't think that does happen. Uh, it is on a three turn cooldown, so that's not bad. And you can also add an additional few levels of healage to that by 25%. It is multiplicative, not additive. So you're looking at what, like around 30, maybe like a 37% heal or something like that. But it's based on their max HP, remember that. So if you have damage dealers, they're not going to heal that much because their health is really low to begin with. So maybe a person that you have on your team that's a damage dealer, they're like 27k HP, max HP. They're only going to get around 30%. So yeah, five to 7,000 heal. It's not that much, maybe 9,000, but it's not that much. Morphosis is the A3 ability for her. This is probably her best ability in my opinion. Fills the turn meters of all allies by 30% and also places a 50% increased resistance buff on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. That's pretty incredible. So this here, it's unfortunate that I wish it was three turns instead of two turns because it would be like an indefinite resistance up. And that would be probably a meta champion, right? Because if it was always on increased resistance, she could be slotted in for arena and do really well on defense. Because if she's the fastest on your team and you have increased resistance the whole time and she's tanky, I mean, there could be teams that are just resisting everything unless you get that lucky 3%. Basically, you would say goodbye to Madame Ceres and pretty much all buff strippers. But then again, people would have to start utilizing increased accuracy champions more often because right now they're not really utilized as often in arena. They're utilized once in a while. Like myself, personally, I use, uh, what's his name? Yoshi the Drunkard. He has increased accuracy, increased attack on one ability, and um, I use him once in a while when I need to try to place bombs on stone skin, you know, because sometimes people place uh, stone skin targets uh, with really high resistance or, you know, and it's just a challenge to get bombs on them. So I do an increased accuracy, place the bombs on them, and boom, they're dead. But if you put her on the team and she increases the resistance, you might be having a trouble with placing those bombs um of course there's astrolith who can just place the bombs through stone skin and increase resistance means nothing so right now like for example in platinum arena bomb meta is the meta right now so bombs are the meta in platinum that's all you see non-stop like for example i've watched rats play a lot he's a good player but all you see is bombs 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 it's very consistent across the board for the platinum meta at this point it's that or it's barren nuking but if you're going up against somebody that has stone skin which again like for example i've seen uh scratch i saw his last platinum reset scratch is also a very strong player in platinum you know he's he's using baron a lot or he's using bombs but mainly it's you know just nuking them down if you can but all i'm seeing is a consistency of bombs to, through stone skin bombs through stone skin bombs through stone skin and that's it so Astrolith is probably the strongest meta champion for bombs. It'll go through the increased resistance. So she's not going to be crazy meta OP or arena in my eyes based on, you know, unless she had other things coming to her kit. But uh, ultimately to stop the bomb meta, you would have to utilize someone in immunity. But immunity gear is very challenging to, to use. So with her, it's just hard. Like me trying to think of where to put her, I can only think of really one place it's iron twins iron twins and then hydra she could be used in hydra as the increased resistance person so that you only need to build your champions with about maybe 300 resistance tops and then she'll increase the resistance by 50 percent so it'll bring it up to 450 resistance which is not bad and then for iron twins you would only need because it's a dungeon she does have an aura of 75 in dungeons so i'll talk about that in a second but let me go on her passive so her passive is untrammeled and whenever an ally loses 15 percent or more of their max hp from a single hit she places a continuous heal buff on that ally for one turn 
and places a 15% continuous heal buff for two turns on that ally and then instantly activates it if Old Tana the Shell is on the same team and it can occur only once per ally turn. A big thing here is I'm wondering if if it, your ally takes a turn, it instantly heals them. Then the next ally takes a turn, it instantly heals them. Or is it that an ally takes a turn and then it instantly heals the whole team and then that's it? That's an interesting passive though. I'm assuming it's the former of the two. But uh, yeah, so going back to the aura, 75 in dungeons. Now, Iron Twins is considered a dungeon. So 75 resistance in dungeons and added on with 50% increased resistance is not bad. So this is going to be a champion mainly used for Iron Twins to full auto. And I say that because people like myself, where I'm a free to play player, right? Let me go ahead and take her away. So people like myself, I'm free to play. I don't have a block damage champion. I don't have Demitha. I don't have Helicath. I don't have Rosh card. Could I make an unkillable team? Yes, I possibly could. But then that would be taking away from my clan boss team. Why would I want to take away a, a two key ultra nightmare clan boss team and just put it on iron twins? That just doesn't make sense whatsoever. So yeah, that just doesn't make sense whatsoever to me. But let me know in the comments down below. Do you really feel that Iron Twins is going to be better for you than Ultra Nightmare? I'm going to have to say absolutely not. So I would not break apart my Ultra Nightmare unkillable team to now put them with Iron Twins. That's just me. So this champion, for example, let me show you my Iron Twins team. I can only do to stage 13 on every single Iron Twins. So I do utilize double Vogoth. I utilize uh, Geomancer as well, and then I utilize uh, Mithrala in there too. Now, I could possibly, if I got a speed down champion, still the Drakes just isn't consistent with the speed down, but I have her in there just in case we need to revive. Geomancer does tend to, to die. So when he's dying, she revives him, and then if he dies too soon, uh, or for example, I don't have enough accuracy on these two champions, that's a problem because I want to extend the debuffs on him as well. So it's just a bit of a challenge with this team. If I re-geared them and put them in really good gear, that'd be great. But the thing is, I'm utilizing these champions everywhere else in the game, right? So it's very hard to tailor a champion if you're free to play to one specific area of the game. If I was a pay to win player, I had crazy gear, crazy amounts of silver. I could just re-gear champions left and right or have multiple copies of every single champion with all the shards that I've pulled, right? But I don't have that sort of capability to do it. Now, with this girl, with this girl, Oella, she's going to be the one that comes into the game and she says, okay, well, I can allow you to get as low as, let's say, let's, let's calculate this real quick in my head. So if you have 400 resistance on a champion, she increases that resistance by 50 double it right now you're going to go to 600 resistance okay um so 400 yeah divided by 2 200 that's gonna be 600 resistance you need 600 resistance on stage 15 okay so if now she has the aura of 75 in all dungeons so you're going to add the, the 75 aura and subtract it from the 400 resistance your champion has and you could end up going down to 325 resistance on all your allies, which is which is actually huge, right? So if you think about it that way, for Iron Twins, you could go on stage 15 probably. The biggest issue is he hits very hard on his Iron Brand ability. So if he uses his Iron Brand ability, your team is going to get nuked down to the ground towards the end of the fight. Uh, and that's why I lose a lot of times is because my team just gets nuked down to the ground from the iron brand because my champions just don't have enough resistance. If I had Oella on the same team and she was in the lead, she brings that 75% resistance. Right now I'm using Geomancer's HP aura. However, having the resistance would now make it so that still the Drakes is going to resist the iron brand. Now, the big issue here is that she doesn't place the decreased speed unless Old Tana the Shell is on the same team. So we have no idea if Old Tana the Shell is going to be any good. I'm hoping that he is good and then I could just replace Vogoth, Vogoth with 
if I ever pulled Ultan of the Shell. I'll put Ultan of the Shell, Oella, and then I would put Mithrala, Geomancer, and then another really good champion like Silver Drake. So you could also put Duchess there too. But again, Duchess speeds up. Here's the thing that I was trying to look at. Iron Brand. Here it is. Attacks all enemies two times. Each hit places it or extends Iron Brand debuff. The first hit places an Iron Brand debuff whose duration depends on each enemy's defense. The enemy with the highest defense will receive five turns of Iron Brand. The enemy with the next highest defense will receive four turns of Iron Brand. While the enemy with the next highest defense will receive three turns of Iron Brand, so on and so forth. The second hit does the same. The duration of the Iron Brand debuffs placed depends on each enemy's attack instead. After the first two hits, attacks all enemies again. The damage inflicted to each enemy increases according to the number of turns remaining on each enemy's Iron Brand debuffs. This hit will ignore 30% of each target's defense. Growth Effect Every time this skill is used, the Iron Twin's attack and defense will be increased by 4% plus an additional 1% for every enemy whose affinity does not match the Iron Twins. So it's also based on affinity as well. The Iron Twins will only use this skill when their HP is below 40%. Now, if you have no Iron Brands, this skill does little to no damage to you. The more Iron Brands stacked on you, you will get severely depleted of HP because he's just going to be absolutely massacring your whole team with how much damage is going to stack up on him for every Iron Brand that adds up on your team. And that's why I lose this fight a lot. Again, I don't have a block damage champion so i can't do stage 14 and 15 right now unless i re-geared everybody and i just don't have the time and the silver and resources to do that right now so i do think she would be great against iron twins i personally will be going for this champion just because i'm a late game free to play player i've been playing for a long time and i do ultra nightmare daily and i got six sacred shards in the past week so that's just from ultra nightmare so here we are. I did pull the monthly sacred there and just kind of going back here. So I just wouldn't be able to do this with the team that I have currently on stage 14 and 15. I'd have to completely re-gear everybody, completely change everything. I just don't have the silver and resources to do that. So in my opinion, this is a 50-50 in my opinion. Like if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you have the resources and you can do it easily, go for it. I mean, it's just another champion to add to your collection. For me, I am going to be going for this champion because I do want to see how good she's going to do against the Iron Twins. If you're super end game, eh, you just don't need to go for this champion. It's not going to change your roster by any means necessary, especially if you're doing Iron Twins Hydra, if you're doing Brutal, if you're doing Hard Hydra, if you're doing Iron Twins 15, if you're already doing everything, then there's no point in going for this champion Oella. Now, for me, I do think that she may be beneficial for my account because increasing the resistance in dungeons and helping me with that stage 14 and 15 of Iron Twins may be beneficial for me. But of course, I would have to build her with accuracy and you would have to have at least 550 accuracy. That's the part that stinks because unless you have Ultana the Shell, she does need accuracy to be built very well with that decreased speed to land consistently and that's why a lot of people are not going for her is because you also need the decreased speed on the iron twins so that you're not dying so quick or that he's not taking so many turns before you plus you need to have ridiculous speed against iron twins you need about 240 250 speed against him and that can be very challenging for most players to get so in this sense it makes more sense to not go for her where if I did want to skip her, I could, but I do really want to utilize new champions in different ways. And I love going for new champions fusions personally, even though some will say it's going to actually hamper my account progression. Personally, there are times where I want to go for the champion because I think they look amazing. I want to see if I can do other things with a champion outside of iron twins and things like that, even though a lot of her kit points towards iron twins and Hydra mainly. Yeah, so I think that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you going to be going for this champion? Or are you just going to be skipping her completely and saving all your resources for upcoming fusions? Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on a video soon. Peace.